Hello everyone, I am the Canadian Gaming Penguin. In this episode of the Manderville Gold Saucer mini-series, I will be explaining how the Jumbo and Mini Cacpops work. I will also be going through each of the different arcade-style mini-games and explaining how they work. Now let's get right to it. The NPC to play the Mini Cacpop game can be found in the entrance square right here. Every day, players can buy three mini Cacpot tickets. These tickets are played one at a time and cost 10 MGP each. Once you have confirmed that you wish to purchase a ticket, you will get this screen. At the top, we have a Eorzean languaged graphic. On the bottom left, we have a play area, or at least that's what I call it. And on the right, we have a payout area. If we look at the play area, we can see that there is a number shown within the circle. Which circle and which number that will be revealed will depend on each ticket. It is completely RNG. In this case, the number is 3. Each spot, which there are 9 of, will be a number ranging from 1 through 9. As part of the play area, we can reveal 3 additional spots. Before I explain some strategies as to which areas you should reveal, I'll explain the importance of these revealed numbers. If we look at the outer area of the play area, we have arrows. These arrows represent a section. For example, the top left corner here will highlight these three different circles. We can't see that right now because we haven't done our additional revealing of the next three spots. Likewise, this one on the right here will highlight these three, and again, we can't see it because we haven't selected made our selections yet. So on and so forth with the rest of these arrows. Now, if we know all of these numbers, so I'm actually going to clear these two for now. So now we know that this is a nine and this is a four. So if we tally up these three numbers, and by tally up, I mean we add them together, so we have a grand total of... What is that, 14? Math on the spot never works well. I believe that's 16. Yes, that is 16. I know math. Anyways, so if we look at this, we see that there are 16 in total for that sum with the 9, 3, and 4. Now that we know the sum, we can look on the right side at the payout and see that if we look at the 16, so the sum of 16 would give us 72 MGP. That is the reward for that if we selected this uh, diagonal. So in essence, the sum of those numbers represent the payout of that ticket if we make that selection. So if we know all the numbers in a row, column or diagonal, then we know that sum and we have to guess the rest of the numbers, which is mostly RNG, but you may be able to deduce. You may be able to deduce. Did it deduce? You may be able to deduce some of the other numbers. If we look at the right at the payout, we will see the sum of six. This one, 10 MGP. I got distracted by the pat there. <laughs> if we look on the right and see the payout, we'll see that a sum of six will grant the most MGP. The only way you can get a sum of six is if you have the numbers one, two, and three in any order they, when they are in the same row, column, or diagonal. So say so the three here, if this was a two and this was a one, this row here, if we chose it, would give a 10,000 MGP reward. The next highest is the 24, which would give a 3,600 MGP reward or payout. The only way to get 24 is with the 7, 8, and 9. So if this was 9 and this was uh, 8 and this was 7, then that, if we selected, we would get 3,600 MGP, so on and so forth. Thus, if you know the numbers or the row or you're taking a gamble and guessing which ones you know, you must have that select that row, column, or diagonal that you want the payout for. So make sure you pay attention to which one you're selecting. I uh, may or may not have accidentally clicked the wrong one and even confirmed it, realized my mistake afterwards, and missed out on the 10,000 MGP. <laughs> I definitely didn't do that twice. Anyways, 
Now that I mentioned the ones, two, and three, seven, eight, nine, those are the numbers that you want to watch out for because they give out the most MGP. Again, these do not have to be in order. The order could be 312 or 231, etc. But they must be in the column or diagonal or row, and you must select that in order to get the payout for them. Now, as for some strategies to reveal the numbers, some recommend revealing a Y. I usually reveal the spots based on what is actually revealed, so we saw that this three was revealed already, and I revealed this one and that one. Well, I could kind of close that up and try with this one, because, but because I know this is a three, I'm actually going to reveal that one, and I see that this is a seven. I'm most likely going to try for this column, because I think this might be a six. And if it is, then it will be rewarded with a 3600 MGP. But the likelihood of that being a 6 is obviously RNG. So let's see. And it wasn't. It was a 2. And we can see here now that all of the numbers are revealed. And you'll also see that I was rewarded with 179 MGP, which is actually the... Uh, count of 18 here, but it was higher than that because of the, the Make It Rain campaign event, which increases by 50% the rewards of MGP. Now that we see all the numbers revealed, we can know which numbers would have actually been higher. And as you can see, as I mouse over this, this tells me that this is 10, and that would be the 80 there. You can see that this one would be 17 at 180. This one would have been 23 at 1800, so this one would have been the better go to get. But of course, I didn't know the 6 or the 8 there. Anyways, once you've done your first ticket, you can, you'll can you be asked if you want to purchase another one. You can either click yes or no. If you do click no and you do want to come back later for that, uh, to buy um, additional tickets, you of course can do so. But anyway, that is the mini cactpot. The Jumbo Cack Paw can be found on the upper floor of the event square, over here. The Jumbo Cack Paw is a lottery that has a draw every Saturday. Players are able to buy three tickets, which cost 100 MGP, 150 MGP, and 200 MGP NGP, respectively. The draw is on Saturday, as I mentioned a moment ago, and the time for the Jumbo Cack Paw will depend on your data center. For me, it's 9 p.m. Saturday. I will leave the link to the Jumbo Cackpot guide that can be found on the Lodestone. The webpage lists the different draw times for each data center. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the crystal data center listed for when the draws are, but if you talk to the NPC here, you will be able to find out when the draw takes place, and then you may have to do some time zone calculations to know what that means for you locally. This applies to everyone, not just the Crystal Data Center, for the record. Anyways, if you collect your winnings by speaking with this NPC, whom I just spoke to, the Catpot Cashier, Within the hour after the draw, you will get an early bird bonus. If you collect after that one hour, you will miss out on the early bird bonus. Also, I have no idea what the amount of the early bird bonus is, just that there is one. It's possible it depends on the tickets sold and other factors, I'm not actually sure. I couldn't find if there was a set amount for the early bird bonus at any rate. After the draw, you have one week to collect your winnings, or consolation prize. And basically, you have until the next draw takes place. Now, prizes. The prizes have a set amount, but there are also bonuses to them. The bonuses will vary from week to week and will depend on how many tickets are sold. So, let me open up the Jumbo Cackpot payout screen for my server. By speaking with the Jumbo Cackpot broker, and view the payout. As you can see, we have the time that the draw will take place on the upper left. I guess it says 8 p.m., so maybe it changed with the time change. <laughs> Good to know! And I also like that it specifies Earth time. That's right, you're on Earth. If you didn't already know that, you sure do now! So, as we can see, we have a participate a participant bonus, and we are currently at level 5 for my server. And that is this levels here. 
This is based on how many tickets are sold. So currently we have 2,457 tickets. So to get the, to the first level of the participant bonus, we would need 410 tickets sold. Well, we obviously already have that. In fact, we already have enough for the second, third, fourth, and fifth. And now we are just three shy of the sixth. In fact, some people might have just increased that. Let's see. Apparently not, but we are very close to the sixth level anyways. As you can see with the tickets and the place, these places here are indicated by the first, second, third, fourth, and consolation prizes on the left. If we look at the first level, we can see that there is a two. So second place, so second prize, would have a 10% bonus to the reward. So in this case, second prize of the base amount would have a 10% increase. And also, to, uh, for the record, the prizes specify what you would have. So, consolation prize is having no numbers match. Fourth prize is last number matches. Third prize, last two numbers. Last three numbers match for second prize. And all numbers match for the first prize. Mentioning the first prize, I will also summarize. This is the only way to get this mad bird ring. Uh, as far as I know, it's just a glamour item. Or for, hey, I won this sort of thing. Breaking rights, I guess. Anyways, back to the bonuses. In the second level, we see that all places would have a 5% bonus. For the third place, we have the fifth place, so that's the consolation prize, but have a 15 MGP, not 15%, just a 15 MGP bonus. For fourth uh, level, we have all places have a plus 5% MGP. And then for the fifth level, we have fifth place with plus 10 MGP. And then again, for the sixth level, we have plus six MGP. And then finally, level seven, if we sell 2,000 or if 2,870 tickets are sold, we will have a plus 7% bonus to the third and fourth places. Now, the process of actually getting a ticket is done by talking to the Jumbo Cackpot broker. Here and then confirming that you wish to purchase a ticket. Once you have done so, you'll have this screen. Now, I'll be talking over footage that I already pre-recorded on Saturday, because otherwise I can't show this. So if what I'm saying and showing don't match, that's why. Anyways, here we have a screen where we can see four zeros. This is the numbers for your ticket. You have the choice of picking the numbers zero through nine, or just hitting the random button at the bottom. Or, if you really wanted to, you could just have a ticket that is all zeros. If you make a mistake in which number you would like to select, you can just click on that number you'd like to fix. You may find that you don't really care about choosing numbers because you know the odds are not very good to actually win, but um, I don't do that, I do actually pick numbers. Once you're happy with the numbers you've chosen, select the purchase button and then it will confirm that that is what you wish to do. Select yes, and then it will ask you if you'd like to purchase another ticket. As I mentioned before, this second ticket costs 150 MGP. Repeat the same process, and then you'll be asked a third time if you'd like to purchase another ticket. With the second and the third times when you're purchasing a ticket, you will also see your uh, first ticket, and then with the third ticket, you'll see first and second tickets, and those numbers that you've already selected right here. If you happen to select no and wanted to buy more tickets, then just speak to the Jumbo Catpot broker again and go through the same process. And that's the Jumbo Catpot. As I mentioned, the odds are not high for winning in the jackpot, but even just getting a semi-passive consolation prize is good enough in my opinion. If you've forgotten whether or not you've purchased tickets, you can check the uh, character, a gold saucer, and at this uh, general page, you will see that the jumbo catpot waiting for results, or it will say uh, tickets ready to be checked or something like that, and likewise with the mini catpot as well. In this case, it shows that all tickets purchased and that my numbers are, yes, those are my numbers right now. And that is the it for the jumbo catpot. Now for the arcade style mini games. We'll be starting in the Chocobo Square. Over here, just before the Lord of Verminion area, we have the Finer Miner and the Out on a Limb. These are the most lucrative mini games of the arcade style mini games. Both games are similar in how 
you have to do the same kind of thing, but the graphic that shows you what to do is slightly different. So I'm going to demonstrate how this works. So with the Finder Miner, we have the play around of the Finder Miner for one MGP, and then it gives you your current balance, yes or no. And on the left here, we see this little graphic uh, with a uh, pickaxe, and we have a Titan, a Morble, and a Cactar. The Cactar and the green color represents the easy level. The Morble and the yellow color, or kind of brownish in my opinion, uh, represents the medium difficulty. And the Titan represents the red, or with the red, represents the hard version. And I'm going to stick with the easy one because I'm not really good at this game. The way the colors are listed right now will change each game. And I'll explain what happens right after I click yes. Uh, but the higher difficulty, the higher the payout, which makes sense if you think about it. Anyway, so we're going to click yes. And we're going to see this fluctuating up and down. You also have a time limit to when you can actually swing. A Titan will give you four chances to try to find the location of whatever it is that we need to find, which I'll explain in a second. With the Morble five times and the Cactar six times. And swing to determine the number of mining attempts. The fewer attempts available, the higher the payout, as it explains in the duty information. So we have this button here that's now clickable. And so if I go ahead, we'll swing that. And now we have six uh, attempts and you can see this is pulsing. And we also have a timer. We need to try to reduce this bar right here. And we see that try again. We were nowhere near the selection uh, where we need to find it. Again, nowhere near. So I'm going to go somewhere in between there. And you can see that reduced a little bit. And I'm going to fail. And that's why I don't do the harder ones. <laughs> As you can see, the colors were different there. So I'm going to try it So until I actually, you know, win the first round. Oh, there we go. See, that just cleared it there because I was right on top of it. So, congr congratulations, you may either claim your reward and end the game, or try again to earn on an even larger payout. But remember, if you fail, all previous rewards are forfeit. Current payout is 35 MGP, double down to payout 85 MGP. So, we have five attempts to double down. I'm going to go ahead and double down. You'll notice the timer has paused right now with this screen. As, as you can see the timer up there as well. And you can see our MGP earned so far is 35 MGP. And this count will uh, reset to the six number because we are on the e easy difficulty. Uh, so if I am successful, well, that was promising. Well, there we go, I cleared it again. So now we can see that I have 85 for my MGP payout, which is what I would be rewarded if I clicked yes, or double down for 125 MGP, and we have four more attempts. Well, we're feeling lucky, so we're going to go again one more time, and you can see that pulsing was a lot faster, and that was actually really lucky right off the bat there. And that wasn't lucky because that was just awful. There. And we're not feeling lucky because I'm not going to do it again. But anyway, you can keep doing that up until your remaining time. So after that, you will be rewarded this. We are not going to double down. So we're going to click no. And we can see we were rewarded with 185 MGP. Well, if we move over to the out on the limb... Uh, well, if you can't figure it out, this is like your minor version of this game. This is going to be your botanist type version on this game. And you can see with the same design, the Titan, Morble, and Cactar. And again, we'll have this pulsing to select your difficulty effectively. And now instead of having a mining thing, we're actually having a uh, tree thing where we need to try to find the area where we, I guess we need to... Okay, that was lucky. <laughs> Uh, to the area of where we need to actually chop. And as you can see, we have a uh, axe here instead of just the pickaxe and obviously the tree. 
And of course, we're going to try again because why not? And as you may have guessed, this will uh, shift much faster the higher the difficulty and the further you get into your doubling down. And there we go. And I'm not going to double it down again, but that is the out on the limb and the finer minor mini games. And I will note right now, keep note of the MGP that this just rewarded because the other mini games will not reward this much. So now we are off. Oh, uh, one more thing. There is also a Cuffaker and the Moogle's Paw mini arcade games on the Chocobo square floor, but I will go over those in the event square where there are more than one of them. And that is where I'm off to next. And over here we have Cuffaker which is located over here. As you can see, this is an area with three different ones, which is why I call this the main area for Cuffaker. With the Cuffaker, we have this down here, and it's kind of, as you can guess, is a punching one. And we have the options of hitting yes, and you can see here on the right side that we have 15 seconds to actually punch. And if we hit in this case, we want to try to hit the red time, so this will pulsate kind of back and forth like that. And we will want to try to time it so when we hit this red button, that it's in the red. As long as it's in the green, so there's a light color green from like about here to about here. If we get somewhere in there, we will get a reward. So in this case, bruising for 10 MGP, punishing for 15 MGP. MGP and Brutal for 25 MGP. It'll actually be higher because of the event right now, but if we get anywhere within that red, it'll be the 25. Anywhere in this uh, lighter green, it'll be 15. And anywhere in this darker green sections will be 10. And anything in this gray section will be absolutely nothing. So, as you can see, we have this, and it also slows down as it goes. And I personally like how the Lolovel has to do that, with jumping completely in the air to actually punch. And that is basically Cuffaker. It is very easy, and as you can see, 38 MGP is how much it rewards right now, normally 25. And that is all it will reward uh, normally. So if you do get it into the red, that's why it is. It's one of my favorite ones to do because of how easy it is and how quick it is, especially with the challenge log for the gold saucer. We have complete three mini games and earn 100 MGP from mini games. It's usually very quick for me. I'm mentioning it, don't forget you have different uh, challenge logs to do as well for additional MGP. Anyways, just over here, as you can see, the Cuffaker was over there, and over here we have the Moogle's Paw. Moogle's Paw is very straightforward. We have uh, this thing that, of course, has Moogles and Moogle themed. And we have the choice of play round of Moogle's Paw for 1 MGP. Yes, we can see the large item is worth 10 MGP and small item is worth 25 MGP. We have a short period of time to actually use this, which moves this horizontally, and this one will move it vertically. And I think I missed... Oh, I got it. Never mind. Yay. <laughs> so that is worth 25 MGP, of course, 38 right now. We'll demonstrate that real. I'll demonstrate that one more time. As you can see, the placement of the, uh, the small item and large items is different every time and I'm surprised I got this both twice in a row. Once you get the use to the timing of moving this horizontally and vertically, it is fairly easy. And no, I wasn't trying to show off there. <laughs> Anyways, that is it for the mini events in this area. And by this area, I of course mean the event square. Onwards to the wonder square. And of course, here we are in the Wonder Square and we have the Monster Toss. And it's just found right over here. With the Monster Toss, if we go up to it, it's kind of like a basketball type of uh, game. Again, we have 1 to 2 points, 20 MGP. Uh, with this one, we have 1 to 2 points with 20 MGP, 3 to 4 points, 30 MGP, and 6 or 5 or higher points, 50 MGP. We have shots made and a timer of 30 seconds to get as many shots in as possible. This 
is where we want to target. This will shift every single time after each shot. And as you can see, the timer is counting down. So far, we have made one basket, so we'll at least get 20 MGP. And I'm not good at this one at all, especially because the uh, shot thing disappears. But now I've made two, and that was awful. And there, I've just ran out of time, so I've only got 30 MGP because of the bonus. We are going to try that one more time. Let's see if we can do better than two. Well, we're so far so good with one. Uh, that wasn't good. That wasn't good at all. I, I suck at timing it when it gets over there. Oh, there we go. We've got a second shot. Let's make it three. And there we go. Three shots. And that's all we have time for, so we should get 30 MGP, or 45 in this case, because of the event. And that is the monster toss, also pretty straightforward. We also have, over on this side, the Crystal Tower Striker. This is your classic kind of uh, fair type event where you have the hammer and you shoot that up there. I also like the Lollafell animation for this one as well. And if you hadn't noticed before, I was dragging this uh, before as well. And you can also drag this around too. Anyway, so playing the Crystal Tower Striker for 1 MGP, we can see we have the Pyro as well. Glancing 10, which will be this green here. 15 for the bluish kind of area. And then 25 for the red. And the gray, we won't get anything. This is a pretty fast pulse as well. And as you can see, the Lollafell lifted up there and I got absolutely nothing there. <laughs> I'm not good at this one either because of how this pulse is. It also slows down after a while, but you do have a limited time. And that is the Crystal Tower Striker. And that is also the last of the different arcade style minigames. So which one are you excited to try out first, assuming you haven't tried them out before? If you have tried them before, which one is your favorite? Anyways, that's where I'm going to leave this video. If you like this video, please hit that like button. While you're down there, please also consider subscribing if you'd like to see other videos like this. If you have any questions or comments about anything I mentioned or missed in this video, please leave a comment down below. The next episode will be all about Triple Triad. If you have any questions about this, I will try to address them in the next video or simply in the comments below. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Thank you.